Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chenen Nanta Sanamad, and I'm an Associate Professor of Bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Okay, so in this video, we're going to provide a practical tutorial on how you can build a simple linear regression model using the caret package in the R programming language. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first step that you want to do is go to the GitHub of the data professor and then click on the code folder. Find the linear regression folder and click on it. Okay, and then you want to click on the Boston housing linear regression R file. Okay, and then right click on the raw and save link as. Select a subfolder in your computer. Save the file. Okay, so the file is downloaded and now let's open up the file. Okay, so here it says that the ML bench package is not yet installed and do I want to install it? So I'll click on install. So make sure that you have ML bench and carrot package installed before beginning. Okay. And even if you don't have it installed yet, and if you try to run the library ML bench, it will provide you with the warning message. Okay. So let's load up the first package and it's loaded up. And then we're going to load up the carrot package. Okay. So the Boston housing data set is provided within the ML bench package. So that's why we need it here. So we want to load in the Boston housing data set. So type in the data function and then inside as the argument, we put in the Boston housing. So control enter, and then you will see that an object appears and the object is called Boston housing. So let's type in head and then Boston housing as the argument. And then we're going to see the first couple of lines of this data frame. And let's check if there is any missing value and there are none. So for reproducibility, let's set the C to 100. Okay, and now we're going to split the data of the Boston housing data set. So in the training index, it will use the create data partition function of the caret package. And we said that we want to split the data set as a 80-20 ratio. Okay, and 80% will go to the training set and the remaining 20% will go to the testing set. Okay, and now let's build the model. Okay, so the following block of code will allow us to build a simple linear regression model using the LM method of the caret package using the train function. And then we're going to assign the resulting model into the model object, which we call it here. So within the train function, the first argument will be the class that we're going to use, which is the MEDV. And then here it is going to be the X variables that we're going to use as the input. And then the data will be equal to the training set. So we're going to build a training model using the training set. And then the method will be equals to LM. Okay, na.action equals to na.omit. So it will omit any missing value. But since we checked earlier on, there are no missing value in the data set. So in this preprocess function, we will perform some preprocessing in which the variables will be scaled to unit variance, meaning that the variance will become one and the mean will be centered, meaning that the mean will become zero for each of the variable of the data set. So this will allow comparability of each of the variable. Okay, and the train control will use the method equals to none for the training model. So let's build the model. So click on the model and then control enter. Okay, here in a couple of seconds, the model has already been built. Okay, and now we're going to apply the trained model right here to predict the house pricing of the training set. And then we're going to assign the resulting prediction into the model.training. And then we're going to do the same by applying the model to predict the house pricing of the testing set. And then we're going to assign this to the model.testing object. Okay, so now that the model has already been trained, so let's build a scatter plot of the actual value and the predicted value. So for the first argument, this represents the actual value of the house median value price. And the second argument represents the predicted value. And so these are the same for the training set and the testing set. So let's have a look. 
x-axis is the actual value and y-axis are the predicted value. So we see that there are relatively good correlation here for the training set. And let's see how well does the training model perform on the testing set. Okay, so that's not bad. Prediction is okay. Okay, so now let's have a look at the model performance. And we could do this by first creating a section here, model performance summary. And then we're going to type in the summary function, followed by the name of the training model, and then hit on the control enter. Okay, so here are the performance metrics. So the intercept refers to the y-intercept, and the y-intercept is 22.5673. And it has a standard error of 0.2356, right? And then each of the x variables will be mentioned right here. And each row will come with the regression coefficient. And so CRIM has a regression coefficient of minus 0.7458. Okay, so here we can see which variables influenced the linear regression equation the most. So they are those with the high value, right? So if we rank them according to which had the most influence on the model, so the first one would have to be our stat because the magnitude or the absolute value is the most at four, right? And then followed by 3.1560, right? And then followed by the 2.4712 and etc. right? So here we're, we're looking at the magnitude, whether it positively or negatively influenced the linear regression model. And then the following, if we scroll down, we will see the residual standard error. And we also see the multiple R squared correlation coefficient, which is zero. 0.7422. Okay, and it has a F statistic of 87.02, and it has an adjusted R square of 0 0.7337. Okay, and so if you want to calculate the correlation coefficient manually of the actual value and the predicted value, you can also do that. So let's create another section. Calculate Pearson's correlation coefficient and then cor and then we're going to copy the arguments inside and they are r training and then let's do the same for the testing r testing cor function the correlation function right and so control enter and control enter and so on the right hand panel here we see the value to be 0 0.847 for testing and 0 0.8614 for the training okay and let's say that we want the r square of training we can also do that as well so let's just use this r square of testing r dot testing And so we see that the R square value are 0 0.71 and 0 0.74. Okay, so we can also calculate these values manually. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.